Hey guys, Zach here from Kubota Lynchburg. And if you just bought a Kubota MX Series tractor today, I'm gonna give you an orientation on it. So I'm excited to be doing this video today. I've done a lot of other orientation videos, uh, look through our history on our YouTube channel, but the MX tractor is my favorite tractor that I sell of any of the tractors. If I had to pick and choose one on our property, it'd be this one right here, the Open Station MX with R4 tires, because these tires are awesome. And I love this MX series. It's a good solid workhorse without getting too big. So that might be why you got the MX series. Maybe you got it because it's that amazing of a tractor and it fits your projects perfectly. Um, and if you did, I kind of want to make sure in this video that you guys know everything to check and look for, how to operate it, what buttons and levers to use, when and where, make sure you're running it right. So. As always with all my videos, I like to start at the front of the tractor. So we'll start with the front end loader. If you got a front end loader on it, you have about 2,300 pounds of lift capacity. Now I've tested the actual lift capacity of these before. Um, you can pick up more than that if you're just picking it up off the ground. But if you're going to full height, Kubota's rated specs are about 2,300 pounds. Now this is a quick attach bucket. It's a 72 inch wide bucket, which is pretty much standard on the MX series, but it is quick attach. So we've got these two handles that we pull to disconnect. So if you want to put pallet forks, grapples, bale spears, you name it, it's the universal. You just pull these two handles up and then push it back down. The important thing when you are attaching and detaching implements on the front is to make sure that this angled pin locks into that rectangular cutout on whatever implement, whether it's the bucket, the bale spear, the grapple, that this locks in properly every single time. The amount of times that we see bent and twisted quick attach frames or people say my one cylinder is out of adjustment but it's actually because they bent that quick attach frame happens so many times every year and it's not a cheap fix so make sure when you're taking your implements on and off that those pins light up they go into the rectangular cutouts and that they are locked in securely um, make sure as you're driving that you don't see them pop up like a stick comes up and pushes one out don't let it do that because again you bend that quick attach bracket and you're out a thousand bucks um so we've got the lift capacity, we've got the loader on it. You could add third functions, of course, on these to run grapples or hydraulic angle blades. Um, this cab tractor here actually has one of the add-ons, which is the level indicator rod. When this rod reaches here, you know, it's going to show that it's actual level. So you might have that, and that's a level indicator rod. To get underneath the hood of one of these, you're going to pull this pin on the grill guard. So it's got a spring release pin right here. So you're going to pull the pin and slide the grill guard forward. There we go. And then there's a little metal ring here we're going to pull. That's basically going to unlock it. And then you just got to put a little pressure on the hood, and up it goes. Leah's going to have a little bit more fun filming this one because this loader is kind of in the way. But if we look up underneath here, we can see this is our coolant reservoir. Um, so you want to check to make sure that you got coolant in there. Fill it up to full. Make sure that the assembly mechanics at your dealership put that right. If you ever need access to your battery, it is very easy to have access there. Your air filter is in this canister here. You just pop these levers open and you get your air filter. You don't have to change that until, realistically, you don't have to change it until it's really dirty and nasty, but most of the time you can blow that out. Make sure you are cleaning and blowing that out at least once a year. Ideally, if you're putting more than 100 hours on a year, please clean that out regularly. Um, this shouldn't be here, but this is how Kubota ships them. This is a slow moving vehicle sign in there. They store it, so make sure that that's not in there because uh, you won't get any airflow to your radiator. The other important thing is going to be the screen behind it, realistically. I'll just pull this out of the way so my assembly guys can throw it on the tractor for me. That radiator screen, you want to pull this out and brush it off if there's ever, you know, the dirt or the grass or the seeds that clogged up. This is your pre-filter for your, uh, your cooling system, so you want to make sure you keep that clean. So if you ever start to overheat, the first thing you do is clean that off. Um, the only other thing underneath this hood, realistically, is going to be some fuses on this side. If you ever need to uh, change some of the slow blow fuses or anything, um, you do have some fuses on this side to work with. Um, you could also remove the radiator screen from this side and clean it out. Um, so that's basically underneath the hood. On the back, of course, is your TPF and engine and everything. You won't really mess on that. Um, I'll go ahead and close the hood because there's not much more to show there. Put this grill guard back. There we go. 
And now we'll talk a little bit about the front axle. So this is a nice beefy 54, 60 horsepower tractor, which means it's got a nice beefy front axle. One of the most common missed things, which I hate to hear, but it happens, is that from the factory and from the dealership that they don't check the front axle hydraulic fluid levels. So it comes filled up from the factory with the Super UDT, which is the transmission fluid on it. Um, and you basically wanna please, when you get one of these machines, just take the time and make sure that that front axle is filled up. And what you do if you come in here and actually come look at it from this side, is you have your fill port here. That's where you're gonna add your fluid, but this is your check plug. So you're gonna to wanna to take this out on level ground and there should be a little bit of fluid coming out of it. Just a little, I think it's a uh, 14 millimeter. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's there. And this is a 27 millimeter. Um, so you're gonna take that out. If no fluid's coming out, pour some um, transmission fluid into here until it starts pouring out of your fill, your check hole. And then just put everything back in and you're tight and you're good. Um, some other things, make sure all your grease fittings are always greased. So you got grease fittings here, grease fittings underneath there on the front and anywhere on the loader, of course, you do have grease fitting. So check that front axle fluid level. Just verify that the dealership handled it properly. It could be a Friday or Monday and the assembly guys forgot to do that. And I'd hate for the front axle to go bad on someone because of that. Now, as far as the loader goes, taking on and off, very rarely will you ever remove it on one of this size tractors. So I'm not gonna really go through that today, um, but you could do it. It's as simple as basically pulling this pin. Um, once you get the weight off of it, you can pull this pin out on either side, disconnect your hydraulics and just back away from it. Um, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there showing you how to take a loader on and off. Just watch one of those if you ever need to do that. But again, rare on this size tractor. So we'll go to the back of the tractor next. Love the three-point hitches on the MX. Like one of the other reasons I love this is because now we have telescoping features. So we have your telescoping lift arms, which basically push down on here. This will come out. So you backed up to your implement, your bush hog, your tiller. And man, I'm two inches away from the pin. And rather than grabbing that implement, trying to pull it in, I know you're probably as big as muscular as me, but rather than pulling it in and trying to get it hooked up, you can just use this and you can adjust in and out. So you can get close to your implement and still be able to hook up. Um, you don't even have to lock it back in. If it hooks up here, you don't have to try to do that. When you get on the tractor, just back up and it's gonna push itself in and click in, which is amazing. You also have your telescoping stabilizer. So to take the extra sway out of your implement, you pull this little carter pin on the bottom and now your stabilizer arms will telescope. You hook it up to your implement, you drop it in whatever hole makes it pretty good and tight right there and you lock it in. Very easy to use, no more twist style turnbuckles, any of that kind of stuff. It's a very simple telescoping style. It saves a lot of time and effort and hassle. Um, and it's also very thick steel. Kubota MXs are designed for work. Um, they're heavy duty, they're thick steel. One of the other features I love in the MX is the size of the drawbar and how far it sticks out. This helps for multiple things, whether you're pulling a piece of hay equipment, if you put a D-ring in it and you're tying it down on a trailer right there, it's so easy to get to, it's not up underneath the tractor. Um, you can put a ball on here and haul around your trailers and stuff at home or your hay wagon or whatever it is, just sitting right there. It's so easy to access where some of the smaller tractors, it's tucked up underneath. Um, another thing on the back end is going to be your PTO shield. So this should, I'm going to hurt myself. Oh, there we go. Rotate up. So when you're getting to your PTO it underneath here, and this is just a protective cover. If your dealership sent you with one of those, just put grease in it and put it on. So it keeps your PTO shaft well greased. If you use PTO open lids, please, every time you go to grease your loader, take a finger full of grease and just wipe it around here or put the finger full of grease in here and put it on and spin it some and that'll make hooking and unhooking implements a million times easier. But your PTO shield does sway up and down to make it a little easier to have access to. So just easier to hooking up your drive shaft. The other thing I wanted to show on the back is your sight glass right here. If you guys see right there, there's a little sight glass. That is your hydraulic fluid check level. So make sure you're on perfectly flat level ground and you should see kind of like you're seeing in the video right there, that bubble on the top, that bubble right there means you're perfect. You want to see a small bubble in it. Um, a little bit more wouldn't hurt, but I'm at a slope and an angle right now, so I have no idea if this is filled or not. Um, and you want to be able to see that it's a little bit yellow. If it is pure white, that's not good. That means they didn't fill up your hydraulic fluid from the factory. Um, so let's see what this cab one looks like. Perfect. It's got a bubble in it as well. Um, but again, I'm on a slope. But if it's pure white and not at all yellow, you want to make sure that you're on level ground and check that you have hydraulic fluid. If you see it and you just got it brand new and it's pure white, you got to add transmission fluid to it. So please do that. 
Um, while we're here, if you have a cab model, you're going to have your windshield wiper fluid here. You do have access to your door. Now, the MX cabs are a very basic price affordable cab. So you don't have things like rear work lights or side mirrors um, or even a right hand door handle. That's not there on the cabs. I've got another video that explains, you know, why the MX cabs are like that. Um, but it's trying to be as affordable as possible to still have air condition, heat, radio, and a windshield wiper. Um, and the cab does have tilt steering column, which is really nice, whereas the open station doesn't. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and hop on the operator station here. Uh, one other thing while in the back, you have this really crappy toolbox. Kubota's toolboxes are the absolute worst. Please replace that at some point with like a uh, ammo can or something from BX Bandit or one of those aftermarket companies. Um, and your roll bars do fold down on the open stations. Obviously, if you have a cab, you can't do that. But on these, you can pull this pin here, fold them down, and you can get under those low-hanging limbs or into a garage. So, this is a hydrostat, and you can get this 54 horsepower in a gear drive. So, if you've got a gear drive, I'm going to show that in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys here the operator station. So... On the hydrostats, you have brake pedals here, which can be locked and unlocked with that little yellow lever. So right now, if I push, that disengages my parking brake. You guys saw that come down right there. And if I wanted to engage my parking brake, it's engaged. And again, to disengage is just push it and it pops right off. And then you can basically pull up on this. And now you have independent brakes, breaking your right tire and breaking your left rear tire or lock them together and break them both simultaneously, which is what I recommend unless you're brake steering. You have your hydrostat pedal here for forward and reverse. This is the same for cab or open station, all these controls. So forward and reverse after you choose your range. So you've got high, medium, and low. Low for low range, heavy duty loader work. Medium for mowing or going uh, you know, medium speed places. And high only if you wanna go really fast don't ever be in high range if you're pulling a heavy implement or doing heavy loader work. This other lever here is actually your cruise control. So the hydrostats do have cruise control. And if you see, when I push this, I'm going to look back over here. I'm pushing that lever and it actually moves your pedal. So you do have forward cruise control on this tractor just by that lever right there, which is really handy. Seatbelts, of course, always wear that if your roll bar is up. On this other side, you're going to have raising and lowering your three-point hitch. And you do have all the slots here for adding rear hydraulic remotes if you ever wanted to run hay equipment like a hay rake with a kicker wheel or an angle blade or anything else hydraulic off the back of the tractor. You do have another grab handle for nice and safety features for grabbing uh, when you have to clench on a hillside. And then this, of course, is to engage your PTO. Now, what I tell people when they're engaging a PTO, aka engaging your tiller, um, your bush hog, your post hole digger, is keep your RPMs low, then engage it, then raise your RPMs. You don't want to have your RPMs on full, um, you know, which would be your, your main RPMs here. Don't run that at 540 and then engage it. That's putting a lot of wear and tear on the tractor and on the implement side that isn't needed. Um, and so basically when we're looking at our dashboard, we're going to have fuel level, RPMs, and that 540 yellow dash is where you'd want to run a tiller or bush hog or any PTO driven implement. You got your uh, temperature gauge there and your hour meter. Very simple, very basic, but very easy to use. Your other buttons here that I'll real quick explain are going to be simple. You've got your top two, which are your emissions controls. So you can basically pause your emissions or cancel it if it is going through a regen, um, or you can force it in a regen right there. You can start it up if you wanted to force a regen to get it done early, um, or if you wanted to do a parked regen for some reason. And this button is actually a parked PTO switch. So normally if you get off the seat of the tractor, you can basically not use your rear PTO um, because there's a safety switch. But if you push that button and flip your seat up, then you can actually use your rear PTO for like a wood splitter or a wood chipper um, while not being in the seat. So that's what that button is for. And then of course your normal throttle right there. So that's your operator controls. I'm gonna hand the camera back to Leah. Um, so again, realistically, Low range for heavy duty loader work, medium range for your mowing, pulling a bush hog or a finished mower. But if you're going hills or slopes on a hydrostat, the lower the range, the better feasible. Don't keep it in high all the time. A um, couple other maintenance tips on these. You wanna do your break-in service at 50 hours. That's gonna be 
oil, oil filter and hydraulic filters. Um, and you wanna grease it every 10 to 15 hours before that. And every time after that, always grease every 10 to 15 hours your tractor over. Um, the more grease, the better in my opinion. Um, comes with a six year warranty um, for the powertrain and a two year fender to fender. Um, somebody else can get into all the details on that, but the good news is six year powertrain warranty on these. So I'm gonna real quick show you guys the inside of the cab tractor. So if you've got a cab, you could see the differences there. But again, as far as the function and the service intervals and stuff, all that will be the same. Same loader, same tire, same axles, same fluids. Um, on a hydrostat, you do want to use the Kubota hydraulic fluid, um, which is going to be the Super UDT. You have to use that with a Kubota hydrostatic tractor. On a gear drive like this one, um, just regular gear drive transmission, regular transmission fluid is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna steal the camera again. All your dashboard components are gonna be basically the same. You still have your emissions protocols, you're parked on the cab, you do have a horn and it takes a little bit different key. Same dashboard and display. Got a nice little uh, view of the front there. Got a nice mirror there to see the Cub Cadet in the background. You've got AC controls, a radio if your dealership put one in, and basically again, your PTO switch over here on the side. Um, and you do have a 12 volt outlet on the cab models, which is nice. But on a gear drive, whether it's cab or open station, you're gonna have your brake pedals on this side now. Um, and so brakes are there. And to unlock them is actually, if you see that yellow lever up there, up underneath, that's how you unlock them if you didn't want them together. And this pedal is your throttle. So you have your main hand throttle here, but on this you've got your foot throttle if you wanted to raise basically your RPMs as you're going to speed up. And instead of brakes on this side, of course, you've got your clutch now that you're a gear driver, a manual drive. So you've got clutch here. And rather than medium and low range, you have a high and low range and a forward and reverse and a one through four. So it's an eight speed forwards because you've got four speeds and high and four speeds and low. And then you've got your forward and reverse lever right here. So it's kind of like a shuttle shift. So shifting between forward and reverse is really easy on the go. And of course your loader controls, remotes and everything else will be the same. So gear drive of this very similar setup other than where you switch between gears, high, low, and your clutch and brake pedal. Um, your other levers here are going to be a suspension seat adjustment. That is gonna control, that one there controls the hydraulics to your three point to uh, control how fast or how slow your three point hitch raises and lowers. On this one and on the other one, this bigger orange knob, that one right there is going to be your four-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive. Um, and so up right here is in four-wheel drive, down would be in two-wheel drive. And then on these, you always have a little angled piece of metal, which is your differential lock. Lock your rear tires together, just push down with your heel. Lock your rear tires together to spin nice, um, so you're not spinning your rear tires. And if you were nice enough and lucky enough and uh, had enough money to buy a cab, you do have tilt steering column, which I love on tractors. So that's the cab and gear drive MX. Um, same serviceability, 50 hour break in. On the gear drive, you only have one hydraulic filter. On the hydrostat, you would have two. Make sure you're changing both on that. On the hydrostat, if it's your 50 hour break in, again, grease everything that's greasable every 10 to 15 hours. Keep up your maintenance, keep up your upkeep. The dealership doesn't have to do the maintenance to keep warranty in, but it is worth keeping records of where you purchase the fluids and filters from your Kubota dealership um, just in case. But that's an MX overview. I tried to hit as much as possible and not too long of a video. So if you do have additional comments, of course, let me know below and I'll try to get back to you.